Each year on Palm Sunday, we read our gospel from the gospel of the year. And so today you have just heard the passion from Matthew. Matthew's Jesus goes to the garden of Gethsemane and suffers excruciatingly in that garden. He lays on the ground weeping and asking his father to let this cup pass from him. He goes to his disciples to look for comfort and consolation to discover that they are sound asleep and Matthew's Jesus is utterly and totally alone in the garden. When Matthew's Jesus is brought before Pilate, you just heard he remains almost silent. He doesn't answer any of the accusations against him. Matthew's gospel is written to Jewish people who believed in Jesus, and Matthew inserts two little jabs at those people not found in any of the other gospel accounts. One is that Herod's wife, a Gentile, had a dream that Jesus was innocent. And the second was that after the crucifixion, one of the Roman centurions, also a Gentile, proclaimed that clearly this was the Son of God. Jesus's, uh, uh, Matthew's Jesus suffers excruciatingly on the cross. You may recall it says in today's gospel that both of the criminals taunted him to the very end. It will only be in Luke's gospel that we hear one of the criminals asking for forgiveness. And then Matthew's Jesus' final words are the agonizing, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? <clears throat> Every year on Good Friday, we read our gospel from John. John's Jesus goes to the garden with great calmness and serenity. There is absolutely no suffering whatsoever and he spends the time in the garden in deep prayer with his father. And when John's Jesus stands before Pilate, he is extremely, extremely vocal. In fact, in John's gospel, it is not Jesus who is on trial. It is Pilate, Pilate representing the world. And Jesus in John's gospel takes every question that Pilate asks him and turns it around as an accusation against Pilate. When John's Jesus goes to the cross, he does so with great submission and great integrity. The final words of John's Jesus on the cross, unlike Matthew's agonizing words, our Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. It is finished. These passion narratives are intended to be participatory. And so every one of us in this room has to ask ourselves the question, who would I be in this parade of characters we have just encountered? Would I be like the crowds who greet him today and hail him in the good times and then forget him in the bad times? Would I be like Peter and deny him? God forbid, like Judas, and betray him? Would I be like the pilot of today's gospel who can't make moral decisions and then washes his hands as he tries to wash away the guilt? Each and every one of us has to ask ourselves, who would I be in this parade of characters? Amen.